Film has been a way to share debating ideas with the world in a succinct and engaging form. Now more than ever, it is breaking the frontiers of film's possibilities. It's being made a way to present societal issues to the modern world, especially young people. It's helping to normalise other cultures' traditions and help eliminate racism by highlighting the cultural frontiers people have and still experience. Not only between Indigenous cultures, but also between political leaders, people of power, people of different identities and genders. Both literature written and filmed is showing the legacy we have left behind and how much our cultures still have to come and the frontiers they still need to overcome. We dive into two films where racism and mistreatment of the Indigenous person is highlighted, showing past and modern circumstances for racial discrimination. The final quarter by Ian Darling explores the lingering effect of casual racism in Australia, while Rabbit Proof Fence, this is director, eludicates the mistreatment of Indigenous people, showing the effort of white Australians to eradicate the Indigenous culture that went well into the 1930s, taking children away to mission land and making them assimilate. Let's have a look into the final quarter. A 13-year-old girl states a racist common at goods demonstrating the frontiers culturally around racism that Australian people still need to overcome and accept. Racism has a face, and last night it was a 13-year-old girl, but it's not her fault. This moment uses techniques like juxtaposition and table footage. The aftermath of this leads McGuire to apologise to goods directly after the game, only to be juxtaposed by racist comments a few weeks later. McGuire's credibility and apology is undermined because of this. Here's another example of the final quarter. Goods does a warrior dance taught to him by a local 16-year-old AFL team, and suddenly everyone thinks it's a problem, highlighting how us as Australians are still not culturally comfortable to overcome this frontier of difference in indigenous and non-indigenous ideas and traditions, and how this can lead to racism. Probably best not to do it, though. I don't really want to see it, quoted by reporters. Goods then quotes indigenous row, proud to be an Aboriginal. Some techniques used by Ian Darling to help convey this moment include super titles, archival footage, and juxtaposition. Darling uses the archival footage during the game to highlight the immediate negative reactions juxtaposed to Good's opinion of his actions. He gives footage in his New Zealand rugby team's haka, which is before every game, providing more credibility for Good's power of war dance can be an expression of culture. He links this all together with archival footage of Charlie Pickering's sarcasm and juxtaposition to any McGuire's interview, calling for more communication or pre warning. Overall, Darling targets the ignorant perspective of some of the media, in particular Maguire, giving light to how what Goods did is perfectly reasonable, especially that it was Indigenous round, and how it's all because of cultural frontiers between Indigenous people and Australians causing casual racism in our country. Thank you, Alex. Darling skillfully incorporates archival footage of Adam Goods post-interview, giving us a glimpse into people's perspectives of the racist comment made by the 13-year-old girl. The press conference reveals his forgiving nature and compassion, creating a positive view of him. Darling targets the ignorant perspective of some of the media, in particular Maguire. Highlighting Good's actions makes sense, especially when he was just trying to play the game and suddenly gets caught an ape. Showing the cultural frontier between non-Indigenous people causing the cultural division and casual racism against the Indigenous Australians. Here is another example. Goods does a warrior dance talked down by a local 16-year-old AFL team and suddenly everyone thinks it's a problem, highlighting how Australians are still not culturally comfortable to overcome this frontier of difference in Indigenous and non-Indigenous ideas and traditions and how this can lead to racism. Probably best not to do it though, I don't really want to see this. Indigenous round proud to be Aboriginal. Some techni techniques used by Ian Darling to help convey this moment include super titles, archival footage, juxtaposition. Darling uses the archival fo footage during the game to highlight the immediate negative reactions juxtaposed to Good's opinion on his actions. He then gives footage of the New Zealand rugby team's haka, which they report every game, providing more credibility for goods of how a war dance can be expressed in the culture. He links this all together with archival footage of Charlie Pickering's sarcasm and juxtaposition to any Maguire's interview, calling for more communication or pre-warning. Overall, Darling targets the ignorant perspective of some of the media, particularly Maguire, giving light to how what goods did is perfectly reasonable, especially that it was Indigenous ran and how it's all because of cultural frontiers between Indigenous people and Australians causing the racism of our country. We also looked into another film course, The Rabbit Proof Fence. 
The half caste problem led to a policy where the children were taken away from their families. The goal was to make the indigenous children adopt non-indigenous culture by placing them in infrastructures or adopting them into non-indigenous families. This policy aimed to eliminate the indigenous heritage. An example of one of Noyce's techniques is a close-up shot of the girls laughing at the authorities that they cannot find the girls. This reveals that the girls of the more ripple sediment are happy girls that cannot be found. Molly, Grace and Daisy represent a fight against the control of the white Australians and the fight of, for their freedom and agency policy where these children were taken away Okay, here's another example looking at the rubber proof fence. Three mixed race girls are escaping from the Moore River settlement where a government policy aims to integrate mixed race individuals into white society. They hope to find their way back to their distant home guarded by the vast rubber proof fence that spans from one coast to another. It might just lead into where they belong. A technique here is an establishing shot, a stream long shot of the land with three girls walking over the land. This scene reveals the survival skills of the girls. They have survived living off the land for a month. This reinforces the reason that their culture prepared them for a life that juxtaposes what the more River Settlement want to teach his girls. Only the three mixed race girls symbolize the culture, cultural frontier between the two cultures, and the non-Indigenous group wants everyone back and to act the same way.